Hey product people, this is Valerie speaking. I'm sure you never work on the hypos or the features improvement or some even features creating isolated. Like you don't pack your bag and go to the island and create something without communication with the outer world. So what I'm driving at is that definitely you handle a lot of research almost on a daily basis. Well, like I do. I'm into the product and I have dozens of interviews weekly and overall I have around a hundred probably conversations per month, like really. So I hope that I mastered the research sphere and right now I can share with you some expertise about it. So when it comes to research, you can actually apply it to almost anything that is connected with your everyday activities. Probably you are deciding what type of button you're going to add on your landing page. Well, indeed, I'm talking about the CTA button. Or probably you are about uh, to create something very, very strategically important and you are going to define your target audience for a particular product. Or probably you are creating a totally new product. Or probably you are creating a feature for your product. So whatever you are doing, definitely you are going to do it in the very, very good rapport with the audience, either the current audience or the potential audience. And here you're going to conduct a lot of research, tons of research. If you are into B2C, you're going to handle the millions of tons of research. No joking. Well, anyways, the main question is how to handle the research. Well, I'm sure you remember my video about the customer journey map where I told you about two ways of research to be done. It's either the qualitative research or quantitative research. And you're always going to start with the qualitative research because uh, first you're going to get the qualitative data. That is actually the basis for all the next improvements you're going to handle. And once you're ready with this type of information, you're going to run some surveys that actually need some more data to prove that you're on the right way. Okay, coming back to the qualitative research. This is almost always a face-to-face -face interaction with people. Face-to-face -face is important. Well, either it is in the online format or next to you. If the restrictions are not here, you can have meetings. Yeah. But the main question is, whom are you going to speak with? Where can you find the respondents? And that was actually a pain a year back or even more, but pretty soon our research team found a few ways that work for us pretty well. So there are quite many places where you can find respondents for your interview. So this video is going to be about it. We are done with the theoretical part and now moving to the practical part. I'm going to give you three or four, well, probably even five ways where you can find the respondents for your research. So like go and find people who are first of all relevant to your research. And when I say relevant, I mean you're going to pre-qualify them and have the research only with those who are into the topic of the discussion. If you're going to conduct a research for a feature that is supposed to improve the customer support team life, don't go to the people who are business owners, for example, or people who are into the sales, because they have no idea what is going on into the customer support team. So go to the customer support team. That is your target audience. And here qualification matters a lot. Whatever channel you're going to use for getting the respondents, the first step is to qualify them. Either you're going to ask people in private messages, like, what do you do? What are your responsibilities? What are your pains, um, etc. So you're going to have the list of the questions to qualify those people, or probably you're going to use a special platform for getting the respondents. And each platform like that, gives you an excellent opportunity to create a pre-qualification list of questions. All right, now straight into the places where you can find people for your research, for one-to-one -one communication, for Zoom meetings, for e-meetings, so for the interviews face-to-face. -face. The first obvious source of respondents is definitely your network. If you're an active uh, social networking user, 
just simply post the information like hey guys i'm doing this and that type of research if you're ready to have communication with me please shoot me a message so you're getting people who are ready to speak with you about the topic well you're going to qualify them as uh, i've already told you and then you're going to schedule the meetings so facebook twitter linkedin are the perfect places where you can find people for this type of communication i mean using network and indeed don't forget about your office premises so like just go to your office and say hey is anyone ready to speak with me about the customer communication metrics and that is it you're getting people who are ready to speak with you but don't forget to qualify them it's really important all right, the next place where you can find people to have conversation with is communities. So the communities should be gathered around a certain problem. If you're working on a SaaS product, you're going to find communities that are around the SaaS growth, for example, and shoot some posts there or find people who are relevant to your problem. I'm personally using a couple of Facebook groups to get the respondents. So don't forget that you should be really precise about the topic you're going to discuss. And also don't forget about the incentive part. That is a really great motivator for people to join your research. That also speeds your research up or even accelerates it. So don't forget about the win-win method. Don't only ask for something from the community you also give it. So either the incentive or something else, probably an extended trial of your product or three months for free or some free books, well, whatever you can offer. Don't forget about the incentive part. It is important. It is a driver of your research. You can also find a few of the Slack communities that are very active about a certain problem. And you can actually search for the keywords that people have been discussing in some threads, in some messages, in some channels. And you're going to shoot direct messages to these people like, Hey John, I've noticed you were communicating about this and that topic. So I'm sure you're an expert and you can help me. I'm doing the research. I'm facing this and that problem. This is my incentive. I ready to schedule a call. That's what you can do. The third way to get the respondents is to use a platform that was created for this purpose. Our team is using two platforms for searching for the respondents. The first one is userinterviews.com and the second one is respondent.io. So both of the platforms are definitely paid. So you're going to pay the commission for searching for the respondents. With the respondent IO, it's 50% of the fee that you are paying to the respondent. Like you are offering $40 per interview, which means you're going to give 20 bucks to the respondent IO. So that is a very fair price. If we are speaking about userinterviews.com, there are two ways to get the respondent. So you're going to search for the people from B2C or you're going to search for people from the industry. So B2C people are $40 per interview. Plus you're also offering some fee to them and $80 for the interview with the expert. Plus, once again, you're also offering something else to the respondent. For example, $80 to the respondent and $80 to the user interviews or $25 to the respondent and $40 to the userinterviews.com. So the incentive is always up to you, but don't forget to create a very nice set of qualification questions that is supposed to bring you the respondents of really, really high value to your business. In the next videos, we're going to tell you even more about the research and the right ways to handle the research to get the best results that you can get and implement the results into your product and start growing. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notifications. And if you know somebody who is going to get the value out of this video, don't forget to share the video with them. See you.